The Dutch and Dutch 8C uses two acoustic ports to create a cardioid pattern over a wide frequency range. Watch this video till the end. There's a lot you need to know. Less obvious uh, benefit of passive cardioids is that there are more degrees of freedom in, in how you can adjust the uh, polar pattern that it produces. In an active cardioid, the only, the only degree of freedom there is is changing the signal to the, uh, to the second transducer. In a passive cardioid, you can, you can adjust the position of the ports, which, which way the ports are facing, and you can, you can use the, action, the, uh, the presence of the enclosure to affect the diffraction of what's coming out of the ports, and in that way get differences in the, uh, in the shape of the polar response. What we've done with that um, in certain cases is, is increase the attenuation at 90 degrees off axis over what would happen in a classic uh, cardioid type arrangement. Watch this short video. As you can see, the noise level drops after activating the ANC system. You might be wondering, what does this have to do with the cardioid speaker? Or, how are these two systems related? In the previous video, we modeled a cardioid speaker using two drivers. The wave propagated by the front driver is nearly omnidirectional, leading to unwanted room reflections. To counteract this, we introduced a second driver, which behaves similarly to an active noise cancellation. We essentially treated the rear radiation of the front driver as noise, while the rear driver functioned like a noise cancelling system to eliminate the rear wave or the sound pressure beyond 90 degrees from the front driver's axis. In this article, you can see the effective range of this system. And this one, it says that after 1000 Hz, sound propagates in unpredictable directions. But how is this plot obtained? The manufacturer has successfully eliminated these reflections across the entire audible range, even though conventional ANC theory suggests that frequencies above 1000 Hz behave unpredictably. So, what if we could accurately predict the speaker's behavior at all frequencies? This means measuring the sound pressure at every angle from 0 to 360 degrees, ensuring that the speaker's response remains controlled and predictable. To achieve this, we need an antinous driver that behaves identically to the front driver beyond 90 degrees, while maintaining an almost perfect 180 degree phase difference across the entire frequency range and almost a 180 phase difference at all angles beyond 90, especially at 180 degrees. But there's another question. What is the relationship between these ports and the rear driver? So far, you've learned that the rear driver or the antinous unit must be reversed and provide a sound delay to cancel the rear wave. In this video, we're going to explore how these ports work. They are called resistive ports a name derived from acoustic resistance. Suppose we have an enclosure, where the compliance is defined by this relationship. These ports introduce resistance, which follows this formula. The P-shaped symbol, or rho, represents air density in the left formula, while in the right formula, it refers to the density of the acoustic material. V is the box volume in cubic meters. C is the speed of sound, and S is the port area in square meters. Now, just focus on the units. If the ports are placed after the enclosure, we can simplify the equation into this form. The resulting unit is seconds. This means the combination provides an acoustic delay which depends on the optimal box dimensions and the selected acoustic material. In this video, we mentioned that the rear driver should be in reverse polarity. 
the rear cone naturally moves 180 degrees out of phase with the front cone. So, we've already reversed the rear driver's polarity to compensate for this. Now, we can say that the ports transfer a reverse sound and provide an acoustic delay, much like an active driver. The best way to achieve the required delay is through simulation, experimenting with different acoustic materials and box sizes. This isn't an easy achievement. It takes a lot of effort and experience to get it right. We need a material that provides a noticeable acoustic delay while minimizing sound reduction. Rockwell around 50 kg per cubic meter and Bassitect are good choices. You can experiment with different acoustic materials and densities. The best approach is to use simulation software like Akabak to analyze their effects. Keep in mind that these materials have frequency-dependent properties, so you can select one based on your project's requirements. One major advantage of using the acoustic delay method is its lower distortion compared to a dual active driver setup. With two active drivers, distortions add up, whereas removing the rear driver helps reduce this issue. When you have two separate transducers uh, receiving slightly different signals, any distortion products from those transducers is not exactly the same. So in the back where the fundamental is being canceled, the distortion products are not canceling. So as you walk around back, the, the ratio of distortion to uh, fundamental is much higher. In a passive cardioid, the back radiation and front radiation are both produced by the same cone motion, so they're identical. Even the distortion products uh, cancel in the back, so the, the net result is that there's, uh, there's less gack in the back, it's cleaner, and as a result, sounds like there's more attenuation.